Hello Eurovision fans, thank you so much for coming back to my channel which is growing at the moment. Thank you so much for subscribing. Today I will be doing an update on my Eurovision prediction for 2023. I will be doing these kinds of videos every few weeks, updating who I think is the most likely to win Eurovision at that moment in time. And as we approach Eurovision, these will be more and more frequent, I think. So I'm going to be looking at songs we already know, but also at the track record of certain countries and just about a feeling I have that some countries might have a winner in waiting, even if they have not revealed the song yet. So let's see. Here are the first uh, five. I'm going to talk about 10 countries in total. The 10th most likely to win Eurovision, according to me at this moment, is Germany. Now listen to me, I know I did a video on how Germany is gonna fail miserably because they're gonna send Ike Hüfgold to Eurovision, but they have one song that I think could actually win Eurovision which, with a good staging and that's Lord of the Lost with Blood and Glitter. It's like a drag, rock, glam rock, hard rock metal kind of song. It sounds a bit schlagery, I really think it could win, so don't kill me if Germany comes last again because we sent Ike Hüfgold. My ninth place would be Israel. Why? Because I think Nora Kirel is not going to Eurovision with a bad song. She's just too professional and she's a great singer, a great performer. I've seen some of her stuff and I think it's going to be a really good song from Israel. So I'm giving her a 3% winning chance. These percentages are not that scientific, I would say. In eighth place, the eighth most likely would be Finland for me. Why? Because they have very good songs in UMK, in their national selection. A lot of people think that Cha 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 is an amazing song and it's going to win. I don't see that so much, but I do like Benjamin and Robin songs. So I think if they choose one of the songs in there, Final Finland are sure to do well, and I think there are some, like for example Benjamin and Robin, that could actually do it and win Eurovision for Finland for a second time. In seventh place, I have Italy. If you've seen my reaction video to Marco Mengoni's performance and song, you know that I absolutely love it. It's going to be my favorite song probably till the end of the season. However, I think that the song is not instant enough to win. He's an amazing performer. He's improved extremely since the last time he was at Eurovision 10 years ago. So I do think that there's a possibility that he could do it, but I don't see it as very likely. So I'm giving only a 4% winning chance. Now in sixth place, I have Sweden. In the last video, you can see it's come down quite a few places because I feel like Melody Festival has lost the plot a little bit. The first two semifinals didn't have any song that I would say is a winner. I quite like uh, John Fjellgren and his song, but the rest I don't really see as a winner. I'm still waiting for the song by Lorene Tattoo, uh, which would be really exciting if it is an amazing song, but her last song that she entered into Melody Festival in a few years ago wasn't that great. So I'm not sure about Sweden this year, but still Sweden is a powerhouse in Eurovision and they're probably going to do well and could find a winning song. Who knows? Now let's get to the top five. In fifth place, I have the United Kingdom. Imagine a few years ago, this would have been crazy, but I think that the UK working together with TAP again, it's their home entry in a way they're hosting not in a way it is the home entry they are hosting bbc is taking it extremely seriously so i think they will bring something really really amazing so look out for the uk we don't know anything yet as far as i know but it's gonna be a good entry i'm quite sure same for my number four the fourth most likely to win which is france i have been listening to tu t'en vas i think Tuton Ira, sorry, by Lazzara, who is the French artist on repeat. It's an amazing song. If she brings something like that, France could easily win it. And she's a good performer. She's a great artist. She has a lot of professionalism. So I think 
Évidemment, I've seen that the song is supposed to be called could be the Eurovision winning song. In third place, I have one of my personal favorites, which is My Sister's Crown from the Czech Republic, or as we now call it, Czechia, um, by Vesna. Um, you've seen my rating video, you've seen my explanation video of the lyrics. I really love this song. And I think if people know about the message that they want to transport and might not know so much about the controversy surrounding the song, this could do really, really well and get a bit of the political sympathy vote, which um, yeah, last year probably went to Ukraine. So I'm looking forward to the discussion leading up to Eurovision and seeing how it is actually going to fare. For Czechia, even third place, where it is right now, would be amazing, of course. My second place da -da 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 -da, is Norway. It's not my favorite song, but it's extremely catchy and she's just everywhere on TikTok. She's trending in Spotify Italy, in Spotify Global, um, like in the viral top 50. Um, this could be a giant viral TikTok hit. She's performing it well. It's really, really catchy. So if she improves her vocal performance and they do something about the staging, Norway could definitely do it with this song, even though I don't think they should, to be honest, but they could. Before I reveal my number one at the moment, here are some honorable mentions. First, the Netherlands. Like with Israel I, and France, I have checked out these artists and they are really, really good. Great vocals and I'm expecting a great song from the Netherlands. Spain, I don't like the song. I don't get the song. I don't think it will do well, but many, many people think it will and it could. I don't think it will win, but it is an honorable mention and then Australia because they have a very good track record over the last couple of years. Now my number one is Ukraine. <laughs> Probably quite controversial, the number one in the betting odds at the moment. Um, the song is catchy, current, modern. It's a good song. I like it. I don't think it would win Eurovision in any other circumstance. And the question here really is, does this sympathy that we saw last year with the giant televoting total that Kalush Orchestra got continue until May or is it gone? In Junior Eurovision, Ukraine didn't do that well in the televote, so there was no sympathy vote really. And I think the song is a bit less of a sympathy vote grabber because Kalush Orchestra and Stefania is, was also a great song, a good song, I like it, but it's also the kind of song that makes you think, yes, Ukraine, this is very Ukrainian and we need to support them. With Tuorci, I'm not 100% sure because it sounds so American, so people might turn away from it, but maybe that's an overinterpretation, I don't know. It really boils down to will people vote for Ukraine because they want to show their support for Ukraine again, or do they think, okay, they won last year, this is enough, let's vote for something else. That's basically what it all boils down to. Thank you so much for listening to me. If you want more reviews, predictions, lyric interpretations, and everything around Eurovision 2023, and also on Eurovision history, please subscribe to this channel. Bye-bye.